A couple weeks ago, I showed you my new 45, which is a 1911. At the beginning of that video, I give you a sneak peek of my other new 45, my new revolver. And that's what's here in this box. This is the EAA Big Bore Bounty Hunter, which is a single action revolver. Now EAA is the importer, and I believe that's European American Armory. Yeah, European American Armory Corps. But this is actually manufactured by Oh boy, my German is not good. You know what? Let me uh let me insert here the voice of Mike Bellevue um, as he pronounces the name of this manufacturer. The Big Four Bounty Hunter is made by uh, the firm of Herman Weirach Waffenfabrik in the Bavarian town of Milrichstad. And their firm's name is usually abbreviated to HWM for obvious reasons. So HWM it is. Now this is in 45 uh, Colt. They offer it in a four and three quarter or a seven and a half inch. I got the four and three quarter. They offer uh, in blued, case hardened, or nickel, and I got the blued. Now it says it's a six shot, but only load five. But it also has a safety transfer bar. Uh, grips are European walnut, and the uh, sights are fixed. Uh, let's take a look at this. Now as I was headed into the local FFL, I, actually as I was driving into, or uh, turning into the parking lot of the local FFL, the radio was on, and I was headed to pick this up and my new 1911, and here's what I heard on the radio. Daddy's got a new 45. No joke, that's as I was pulling into it, and I was thinking, nope, not a new 45, two new 45s, ha <laughs> ha, it's a good day. Um, Let's see, obviously the revolver comes in the box. Um, another bike lock. I guess this one's for little tiny bikes. And a little nylon cleaning brush. You know you're getting a quality firearm when it comes in a cardboard box. No, I'm just joking. Actually, I paid $395 for this revolver. It's brand new. In several places online and this box, it mentions a four and a half inch. Uh, owner's manual said four and three quarter. Now, this is a clone of the, mostly, of the Colt Single Action Army that came out 1873. And those came with a seven and a half inch barrel. Uh, the traditional measurements on other options though they were they came in seven and a half five and a half and four and three quarter not four and a half the owner's manual said four and three quarter the box and the online label said four and a half so which is it four and three quarter you know while we're getting measurements let's go ahead and throw this thing on the scale two point three five four pounds which is 2.57 ounces, I'm sorry, 2 pounds, 5.7 ounces, 37.67 ounces, and for the folks in the rest of the world, that's 1,068 grams. And one of the oddities of this revolver, it is a single action, and much of it is like the old Colt, but one of the oddities is that safety, internal safety uh, transfer bar mechanism. What that does is if you the hammer falls and the trigger isn't pulled, um, the hammer won't make contact with that internal firing pin. And so technically you can carry six in this safety, uh, safely while the old Colts with the hammer man, uh, mounted firing pin, you could only safely carry five and you'd carry that set um, with the hammer set on an empty chamber. That is just like uh, Ruger revolvers. Actually, uh, my understanding is... HWM licenses that transfer bar safety from Ruger, and I believe that that's uh, one of the ways they comply with uh, Gun Control Act requirements, uh, Gun Control Act of 1968, and guns that are imported. Transfer bar safety is like a Ruger, but just about everything else is like an old Colt. Now, HWM does use the same frame, if you noticed in the uh, owner's manual, 
to make a 357 Magnum and a 44 Magnum, so it's a very strong frame. Now, I have no intentions of trying to load up 45 Colt to Magnum velocities, but um, it should be able to handle a fairly stout load. I don't recommend loading up anything for this that uh, is marked as Ruger only. Let's take a look at some of the markings on here. See if we can see that. It says something about being safe by reading the owner's manual before you use it. it has the uh, Bounty Hunter EAA Cocoa Florida, and then HWM from Germany. When I first got this, there's a little mark right here that I thought was a scratch, but I found that same mark here with the import markings, and then I found that same mark here on the cylinder as well. That is one of the import stamps, I believe. Now just like the Colt, this comes apart the same way as the Colt. A couple minor differences. With the Colt you get the four clicks, the C-O-L-T. This does not have the four clicks. This only has three which as we all know stands for loads of bacon. Now, there's a couple markings here on the cylinder. You can see right there the HWM for the manufacturer and then right here it says 45 Colt. Now I've got some um, factory ammunition here which I've always thought these guys had the coolest looking boxes um, and then some some Winchester 45 Colt these are 250 grain lead round nose flat points These are also 250 grain lead round nose flat points. And then this is a 230 grain 45 Schofield. Similar uh, bullet profile, uh, 20 grains less weight. And for those not aware, it's my understanding this is where the discussion of, or I'm sorry, the, the uh, naming of 45 Long Colt comes from. Technically, this is a 45 Colt. And this is a 45 Schofield. It's also had a couple other names. I mean, this one's longer. Through the course of time, this be, uh, came to be known as the 45 Long Colt. Now, this type of revolver came uh, into use by the Army in 1873. Theirs had a 7.5 inch barrel to start with. And it was the Army's uh, primary sidearm until, I think, uh, 1892? I think in 1892 it was replaced by a 38 Long Colt uh, double action revolver. But from 1873 until 1892, this was it for the Army. But a couple years after 1873, they also adopted a Smith & Wesson revolver, uh, the Schofield, as an alternate sidearm. And that Smith & Wesson revolver used the 45 uh, Schofield round. The shorter cartridge is similar in performance and similar in size, but it's shorter. And it came to be a problem with both of these in use by the Army. I believe the boxes, that, the cases that these were in were just marked pistol 45 caliber and units that had Schofield revolvers were getting these longer rounds issued to them at times and it did not work in their revolvers. The Colts could use both rounds but the Smith & Wessons could only use the shorter round and so folks started referring to the 45 Colt as the 45 Long Colt and this went on for probably about a decade and then I believe in 1887 Frankfurt Arsenal dropped the longer round from production and only produced the 45 Smith & Wesson round and they started referring it, uh, to it as the 45 caliber, what was it, the M1887 military ball cartridge, up until, again, uh, about 1892 when the Army moved on to the 38 Long Colt. So this was the 45 Colt. This came out, could be used 
Either one could be used in the Colt, but only the shorter round could be used in the Smith & Wesson, which was also in use, so they ended up ditching the longer round, which affectionately became known as the 45 Long Colt. Uh, so, which is correct? 45 Colt, 45 Long Colt? Yeah. Both. Um, but this 45 LC is a 45 Colt, uh, and the 45 LC Long Colt name um, was really a nickname. Bet you didn't know you were getting a pseudo-history lesson for today, huh? Hopefully everything I said was right. Actually, the three boxes I just showed you, the 245 Colt and the 45 Schofield, were given to me by a guy I used to work with who had asked his wife to stop by the store and pick up some 45 ammo. And this is what she got, because he hadn't specified that what he needed was 45 Auto or 45 ACP. He couldn't use these in his, uh, I believe he had a 1911, and so he gave them to me. Now, I, I just got this revolver, but I have already have a Taurus Judge, which shoots 45 Colt as well. Now, if you'll notice, this chamber does have, uh, or this cylinder does have countersunk chambers. And I've heard rumor that the 45 Schofield with the slightly larger rim won't fit in there. But in the one that I got, it does. Now, I'm not sure if we actually need this. It's kind of a neat feature. But if you're picking up one of these for something like cowboy action shooting or or other such activities, that can be kind of hard. Let's go ahead and put this back in here. Oh, forgot this. That can be kind of hard to see whether or not, with a visual along the back of the cylinder, whether or not it's loaded. You have to put it in half cock in order to rotate the cylinder. If we put a round in there and we close that gate, even with very close inspection, it is hard to tell whether or not that's loaded. Speaking of range, I have taken this to the range already and let me go ahead and show you some of that footage. This thing was a ton of fun to shoot, but I ran into a big issue. Everything I shot was this factory ammunition, modern factory ammunition. These are going to be sized to 0.452 or maybe even 0.453 for the lead bullets, which most modern firearms, that's not an issue. This one, and this is a brand new firearm, These bullets are sized to 0.452. And they simply fall right through the mouth of that chamber. On all six chambers. And the reason is...
those chambers are .4565 inches, all six of them. Now, folks will tell you the, uh, these used to be .454 and now they're .452. And that change was made a few decades ago. And that makes sense because if you take a look at the SAMI specs, I printed out the SAMI spec sheet here for 45 Auto. This bullet is supposed to be .452 or a hair smaller for a jacketed bullet and then a lead bullet is .453 down to .450 if I'm reading this, this latter part right. A 45 Colt is marked in SAMI currently as .456 anywhere from there down to .450. .456 is the SAMI spec measurement on a 45 Colt. And if you look at the SAMI spec for the chamber itself, it's .452 up to uh, .4595. So this chamber is within SAMI specs, but it's rather annoying when you're hoping to shoot a .452 bullet. I was hoping I could use the same bullet in my 45 Auto and my 45 Colt, but that is not going to be the case. Now those factory 45 Colt bullets that I shot, I put 11 of them over the chronograph and they averaged 718 feet per second and the 45 Schofield averaged 759 feet per second. But the shots from both of those were all over the paper. I was shooting at 7 yards and I had one of those man-sized silhouette uh, targets that you've seen in my other videos and every shot was within the black but they were all over the place and I even tried shooting two-handed and uh, there's probably a couple people out there that will swear two-handed firing a single action is uh, maybe against the law of nature or something but uh, I tried two-handed to see if that made a difference and it tightened up the groups a little bit but not by much in fact uh, here here's a little clip of me trying to shoot two-handed And I don't have a picture of the target, uh, wasn't worth taking a picture of, but those shots went all over the place. And I'm convinced that the, those went all over the place because the bullets are too small for, these, um, for the mouth of these chambers. In fact, the last shot I had with a 45 Schofield found my chronograph. Fortunately, it was just the, uh, the little sunshade that goes on top has this bar sticking out of it that it installs it onto the chronograph body. Well, that 45 Schofield, uh, that's what it does to one of those. Here's the 45 Schofield. Now I've had to have my chronograph repaired uh, due to contact with a bullet before. This one was a whole lot easier. I stopped by the local hardware store and uh, picked up a three foot, what is this, I think it's a one sixteenth, uh, no three sixteenth, a three sixteenth um, little round bar here and it was less than two dollars. I was able just to cut off a piece and it it replaced uh, the damaged one just fine. So I was good there. But uh, yeah, I now have two bullet molds on order that are specific for this firearm. I had to, I asked for the bullets to drop out of those molds at at least .457. I also already picked up a Lee push-through sizer. It's .457. And we'll see if we can't get this uh, this modern peacemaker to actually shoot a halfway decent group with those larger bullets. I expect to have a lot of fun with this, and I'm I've always wanted a single action. 
and I believe I'm going to be happy with it, but I still need to cast up the properly sized bullets, and I expect that this thing should be as accurate as anything I own. Nice thing about being a caster and loader, a uh, reloader, is I can make ammo to match the firearm. Otherwise, I'd be very frustrated with this. Now, the trigger pull is not bad, but it's a bit more than I thought it would be. It's a little, little heavier than I thought it would be. And so I've ordered some new springs for it. And this, uh, the grips on this are a plain wood. I believe that's, what did this say? European walnut. Um, I think I'll keep the grips, but I'm going to probably finish those a little bit. Probably, I've got a mixture of tongue oil and beeswax that I'll probably put on there. So soon you'll see more of this, but it won't go back to the range until I get those new bullets cast up and loaded. Again, I have no plans to hot rod this. If I want a magnum load, that's what my 44 magnum is load, uh, for. But I, I do plan to have some fun with this at the range. And maybe, uh, maybe one day in the future I'll go hunting with this. We'll see. Well, that's all for today. I appreciate you watching, and God bless.